when Darwin first published his book on the origin of species, you know, he and uh, Alfred Russell Wallace had they had presented a little paper together about evolution before this book was published. That got people really excited, but then this, when this book came out, a lot more people jumped on board. It really took over surprisingly quickly uh, as far as revolutionary theories go. A lot of people started picking up Darwin's ideas and going with it. And the reason for that is they saw how valuable it was. It was immediately useful. It immediately made sense of a bunch of things that just nobody could explain. Things that we knew about, but no one could explain. One of them was the existence of invasive species. We didn't call them that at the time, but it was well known that a species from a foreign land can come to a country and just take over. They will outcompete all of the local species and become the new dominant organism. I used to live in Tennessee, and over there it was kutsu. Kutsu was a huge problem. This plant that just grows on everything. It turns forests into these blankets of just dead trees covered in kutsu, which is a, I believe it's a Japanese plant. In Australia, of course, there are these huge mouse plagues that happen every few years. Absolutely devastating. And these are mice, which are not native to Australia. They came there with, you know, European explorers and ended up taking hold in Australia, outcompeting local mouse-like marsupial organisms that live there. And they just, they're catastrophic, right? The theory of special creation, which is what most people believed in at the time in Europe, that said that species were immutable. They were created in their current form and they never really changed much over time. God created them that way, and God created them to be perfect for the land that they inhabited. Well, the existence of invasive species was a big slap in the face to that theory. It didn't, the theory couldn't make sense of this. How, if God had created these organisms to be perfect, a perfect match to their environment, how could some foreigner come in there, something adapted to a different environment, and just devastate everyone take over everything. How could that be possible under this special creation plan? Well, here in Darwin's first book on evolution, he explains how this works, what's actually going on here. Page 647 in, oh, I'm not sure which edition this is. I think maybe this is the second edition. No, this is the sixth edition. The whole text, by the way, for this book, the first edition, all the, all the major editions are online and they're free. As natural selection acts by competition, it adapts and improves the inhabitants of each country only in relation to their co-inhabitants, so that we need feel no surprise at the species of any one country, although on the ordinary view supposed to have been created and specially adapted for that country, being beaten and supplanted by the naturalized productions from another land. So he's saying it's it's really no surprise that it's possible for a foreign species to come in and dominate the local species. Nor ought we to marvel if all the contrivances in nature be not, as far as we can judge, absolutely perfect, as in the case even of the human eye, or if some of them be abhorrent to our ideas of fitness. We need not marvel at the sting of the bee when used against an enemy causing the bee's own death, at drones, bee drones, being produced in such great numbers for one single act, the male bee drones, they are, they're produced just to mate and then they're killed, and being then slaughtered by their sterile sisters, the ones that aren't used end up getting killed by the sterile workers. We need not marvel at the astonishing waste of pollen by our fir trees, at the instinctive hatred of the queen bee for her own fertile daughters, at Ichnemonidae, these parasitoid wasps, the wasps that lay their eggs inside living caterpillars. We need not marvel at Ichnemonidae feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars. Darwin hated that. He was really disgusted by the fact that they do that. Or at other such cases. The wonder, indeed, is, on the theory of natural selection, that more cases of the want of absolute perfection have not been detected. So that's just one of many of the questions people had about biology back then that no one could answer with their current theory. And once evolution came along, bam, it was immediately understood. The reason for invasive species is that natural selection doesn't perfect anything. The fitness of an organism is relative 
to the individuals it is competing with, the other members of its own population, which it's competing with, you know, to find mates and so on, and its own local predators and pathogens and so on. So when you take an animal out of its envi environment and put it in a new environment, it might just die there. It might not be fit at all for that new environment. Or it might have fine-tuned its skills so well in the crazy battles of its homeland that in this new place it just dominates everyone. <laughs> and we see that happening. It happens a lot. House cats, man, they're really good at taking over. Rabbits are another species that really thrived in Australia. It's like a serious problem in Australia. There's a bunch of beetles that we have here. In Oregon, we have the bullfrog, which is eating the western pond turtle. And that bullfrog came, it was like pioneers brought it there because they, they like to eat frog legs. And so they brought it over the mountains with them. The barred owl is invasive in Oregon as well. And it's killing the spotted owl. And Darwin was the one who figured this all out. Dude was smart. I found what appears to be a leech. Oh, giant flatworm. Good, take it. Whoa. Take it, take it, take it. Oh. He slipped away. Oh, it's attached. No way. It's a huge one. Slippery little leech. <laughs> it doesn't work. Attaches to the rock? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. That's so cool. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> He's huge. It's beautiful. Wow. It really is. Beautiful colors. Pretty colors. Wow. It's orange. Beautiful, John. Wow. I don't want to. Do they have parasites? No. They are a parasite. They just, they just suck. They don't put anything in your arm. Pick it up again. Do you want it? Let it suck your blood. I want to see it's, what its mouth looks like. It doesn't want to suck me. It's too scared. Well, he's holding on to it. <laughs> he's attached to you. Yeah, I've never seen a, such a beautiful one. Look at him swim. 